My partner left our baby at the airport and disappeared. The airport was bustling with travelers hurrying to catch their flights. The air filled with a mix of excitement and tension. Among the crowd, a young mother held her baby close, her eyes scanning the departure board for their flight to New York. She had no idea that in a few hours, her life would be turned upside down. Do you have everything? I asked, glancing at Thomas, my partner, as we waited in line to check in. Our baby Yili was nestled in my arms, gurgling happily. Thomas nodded, his expression calm. Yes, everything is packed. Don't worry, Emily. We'll be in New York before you know it. We had planned this trip for months. It was supposed to be a fresh start for our little family. A chance to leave behind the stress of the past year and embrace new opportunities. I trusted Thomas completely, never doubting for a moment that he would take care of us. As we moved through security and into the terminal, Thomas excused himself to go to the restroom. I'll be right back, he said, kissing Lily's forehead. Watch our bags, okay? Of course, I replied smiling. I watched him walk away, unaware that this would be the last time I would see him for a long time. Minutes turned into an hour and there was still no sign of Thomas. I tried calling his phone, but it went straight to voicemail. Anxiety gnawed at my stomach as I paced the terminal, Lily growing restless in my arms. Excuse me, have you seen a man about this tall, brown hair, wearing a blue jacket? I asked a security guard, showing a picture of Thomas on my phone. The guard shook his head. I'm sorry, ma'am. There are so many people here. May we try paging him? Desperate, I went to the information desk and asked them to page Thomas. His name echoed through the terminal, but he didn't appear. Panic set in as I realized something was terribly wrong. Just as I was about to call the police, my phone rang. It was an unknown number. With trembling hands, I answered. Emily Harper? Yes, who is this? This is Officer Johnson from the airport police. We found your baby alone at the departure gate. We need you to come to security immediately. My heart stopped, Lily. But she's with me. I looked down, realizing with horror that Lily was gone. In my frantic search for Thomas, I had somehow let her out of my sight. I rushed to the security office, tears streaming down my face. There, in the arms of a kind-looking officer, was Lily, safe but scared. I took her into my arms, holding her tightly as relief washed over me. Ma'am, we need to talk about your partner, Officer Johnson said gently. He left a note. The note was short and vague, written in Thomas' familiar handwriting. Emily, I'm sorry for everything. Please take care of Lily. I'll explain when I can. Trust me, this is for the best. Thomas. My mind raced with questions. Why would Thomas leave us like this? What could possibly justify abandoning his family at an airport? Officer Johnson looked at me with sympathy. Do you have any idea why he might have done this? No, I said, shaking my head. Thomas loved us. He wouldn't just leave. There has to be an explanation. The airport police began an investigation, but there were few leads. Thomas had disappeared without a trace, leaving behind a bewildered and heartbroken family. I returned home with Lily, my mind filled with unanswered questions and a gnawing sense of betrayal. Days turned into weeks as I tried to piece together what had happened. I reached out to friends and family, but no one had seen or heard from Thomas. His social media accounts were inactive and his phone remained off. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. One evening, as I was going through our finances, I found something odd. There were several large withdrawals from our joint account, made in the days leading up to our trip. The transactions were traced to a small town a few hours away. My heart pounded as I realized this might be a clue. I decided to drive to the town, hoping to find some answers. I asked my best friend Sarah to watch Lily while I was gone. Sarah was hesitant, but she understood my need for closure. Be careful, Emily, she said, hugging me tightly and call me if you need anything. The town was quiet and unassuming, a stark contrast to the chaos that had consumed my life. I checked into a small motel and began my search. The bank transactions had been made at an ATM near a local bar. I decided to start there. As I walked into the bar, I felt out of place. The patrons eyed me curiously, and I could feel the weight of their stares. I approached the bartender, showing him a picture of Thomas. Have you seen this man? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. The bartender squinted at the photo, then nodded. Yeah, I've seen him around. He comes in every now and then. 
doesn't talk much, just sits in the corner nursing a drink. My heart leaped. Do you know where I can find him? The bartender shrugged. He mentioned staying at the old Johnson place up the road. It's been abandoned for years, but some folks use it as a hideout. I drove to the old Johnson place, my mind racing with possibilities. The house was dilapidated, with broken windows and overgrown weeds. It didn't seem like the kind of place Thomas would be, but I had to check. As I approached the house, I saw a flicker of movement inside. My heart pounded as I pushed open the creaking door, calling out Thomas' name. Thomas, are you here? There was no answer, but I could hear someone moving around upstairs. I climbed to stairs, my footsteps echoing in the empty house. At the top, I found a door slightly ajar. I pushed it open and there he was. Thomas looked up, his eyes wide with surprise. He was unshaven, his clothes rumpled. He looked like a man on the run. Emily, what are you doing here? I should be asking you that, I replied, anger and hurt bubbling to the surface. You left Lily at the airport and disappeared. What's going on? Thomas sighed, running a hand through his hair. I didn't want to involve you in this. I thought if I disappeared, you and Lily would be safe. Safe from what? I demanded. You owe me an explanation. Thomas took a deep breath and began to explain. Years ago, before we met, he had been involved with a criminal organization. He had managed to get out and start a new life, but they had found him again. They threatened to harm us if he didn't return to work for them. I thought if I left, they would leave you alone, he said, his voice breaking. I didn't know what else to do. I'm so sorry, Emily. Tears streamed down my face as I listened to his story. It was a lot to take in, but I understood his fear. Still, leaving us without a word was unforgivable. We need to go to the police, I said firmly. You can't handle this alone. Thomas nodded, knowing I was right. We returned to the motel and called Officer Johnson, who arranged for us to meet with the detectives specializing in organized crime. The next few days were a whirlwind of meetings and planning. Thomas provided the authorities with information about the organization, and they assured us they would do everything they could to protect us. A raid was planned to take down the criminal organization. Thomas and I were placed in protective custody, our location kept secret. The raid was a success, resulting in multiple arrests and the dismantling of the organization. It was a huge relief, but the ordeal had taken a toll on us. Trust had been broken, and it would take time to rebuild our relationship. Thomas was remorseful, and I could see the guilt eating at him. I'll spend the rest of my life making this up to you and Lily, he promised, his voice filled with determination. We moved to a new city, far from the memories of our past. Thomas found a job and began attending therapy to deal with the trauma of his past life. I focused on creating a stable and loving environment for Lily. It wasn't easy. There were days when the fear and anger resurfaced, but we were committed to working through it. Thomas was patient and understanding, always willing to talk and listen. One evening, as we sat in our new home, Thomas took my hand. Thank you for giving me a second chance, Emily. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm grateful. Our new life was different, but it was filled with hope and promise. We made new friends and began to feel a sense of community again. The experience had changed us, but it had also made us stronger. Thomas became an advocate for those trying to escape dangerous situations, using his experience to help others. I found solace in writing, sharing our story in the hopes of inspiring others facing similar challenges. One day, as I was cleaning out an old box of Thomas' belongings, I found a small, leather-bound journal. It was different from the one I had found before, filled with entries about his time undercover. I sat down to read, feeling a mix of curiosity and apprehension. The journal detailed his fear and determination to protect us, but it also revealed something unexpected. In one entry, Thomas wrote about a plan he had devised to take down the organization from the inside. He had been working with the authorities all along, feeding them information to build a case. I knew it was risky, but I couldn't let them threaten my family. I had to do something. I hope one day Emily will understand and forgive me. Tears fill my eyes as I read. Thomas had been a hero, risking everything to keep us safe. My anger and hurt began to melt away, replaced by a deep sense of pride and love. As I looked at Thomas, playing with Lily in the garden, I knew that our journey had been difficult, but it had also revealed the strength of our love and resilience. 
we have faced unimaginable challenges and come out stronger. Our story is a reminder that even in the darkest times, there is always hope. We may face trials and tribulations, but with love and determination, we can overcome anything. And as I hold Thomas and Lily close, I know that no matter what the future holds, we will face it together, with hope and love guiding our way. Months after the ordeal, we were finally able to put the past behind us. The criminal organization was dismantled, and we were no longer living in fear. Our lives had been forever changed, but we were stronger for it. Thomas and I renewed our commitment to each other, vowing to never let anything come between us again. We focused on creating a loving and supportive environment for Lily, ensuring she would grow up feeling safe and cherished. Our story became a beacon of hope for others, showing that even in the face of adversity, love and determination can conquer all. And as we looked to the future, we did so with a renewed sense of hope and gratitude, knowing that we had faced our greatest fears and emerged stronger together. Our family was whole again, and we were ready to embrace the new chapter of our lives, confident that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, with love and courage guiding our way.